Hey everyone, welcome to The Foreign Fork. My name is Alexandria and this is The Foreign Fork where we are cooking one meal from every country in the world. And today we are journeying to Ethiopia. The dish that we're gonna be making today is called Dorawa and it's a spicy Ethiopian chicken stew. So to get started, the first thing that you're gonna need is three tablespoons of ghee, or you can also use nidar kibbe, which is like a spiced version of ghee. I have a recipe for nidar kibbe on my site, also made with the Instant Pot. So if you wanna make a version of that, I will leave instructions down in the description below. If you don't wanna make it or you can't find it, no worries, you can just use regular ghee as well. Once I've added the ghee into the pot, we're gonna turn the pot to the saute function and then we're gonna allow the ghee to melt for a second. And then once it does, we're gonna add the red onion to the pot. So I have one red onion that I've chopped up finely and we're gonna cook that in the ghee. So you're gonna wanna saute your red onions just until they soften. It'll take maybe five or six minutes on the saute function. Once your onions have softened, you can turn the pot off because now we're gonna add in everything else that we need to pressure cook. So to the pot, we're first gonna add two teaspoons of ginger, and that is fresh ginger. I cheat a little bit and buy it out of like a squeeze tube at the grocery store because I use it so frequently. But you can also get a ginger root and you can um, shave it on a, on a cheese grater and get ginger that way as well. We're also gonna use two teaspoons of chopped garlic, one teaspoon of ground paprika, three tablespoons of tomato paste, and about one tablespoon of bear beret seasoning. Now, this seasoning is up to your discretion. You can use more or you can use less if you'd like. It's a pretty spicy seasoning, so depending on your preference in terms of spicy, you can use more or less. I normally get my bear beret seasoning from the grocery store if I can find it, but every once in a while, it's, it gets kind of tough to find. So it's an Ethiopian and Eritrean spice blend that's used a lot in their um, like stew dishes, especially ones that are tomato based. The link to that recipe is in the description of this video, so if you need to make your own berberry seasoning, you can go and check that out. So you should have a little mixture in the bottom of your pot right now that's some of the onions mixed with tomato paste and some seasonings. To this, we're also gonna add two cups of chicken broth and then about two pounds of cut chicken. So I use a bone-in skin on chicken thighs and bone-in skin on drumsticks. If you like really spicy food, you can also sprinkle some berberry seasoning on the chicken before you actually put it in the pot. But if you are a little bit more um, timid when it comes to spice, you do not have to do this. You can also just um, put the chicken right in the pot as is. Once you've seasoned the chicken to your liking, you can put all of the pieces nestle in here amongst the chicken broth. And that's it. So now you're just gonna put the lid onto the Instant Pot. Make sure that you seal it to pressure. We're gonna turn it to high for 10 minutes and then we're gonna allow for a natural pressure release for 15 minutes. And then after that 15 minutes is up, then we're gonna quick release any remaining pressure that's still in the pot. Once the natural pressure release was over, I did a quick release of the rest of the pressure in the pot, took the lid off, and then removed all of the cooked chicken from the pot. So now we're left with just the sauce in here um, that's still pretty liquidy and we want it to thicken up a little bit. So we're gonna go through the process of thickening up the sauce together. I have a quarter to a third cup of water and then I also have one quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna mix the flour into the water. I'm gonna use a fork to combine it, making sure that all of the clumps of flour dissolve. Any clumps that you pour into the pot, you're gonna get left with like clumps of cooked flour kind of in your stew. So you really wanna make sure that you're mixing it up until all of the flour completely dissolves and then you can put it in the pot. Okay, so it's pretty smooth now. Everything is almost dissolved and now I'm gonna pour this into my pot. I turned my pot back to the saute function, so now the pot is again on the saute function and the sauce is gonna be in here. Once it comes to a boil, the flour is gonna start thickening the sauce that's in here, so just make sure to stir it a little bit and let it cook for maybe five or six minutes until it starts to thicken. Once your sauce starts to bubble and thicken, you can turn the saute function off and then add the cooked chicken back into the sauce just so that it can start to heat up. So I personally, in order to get uh, two pounds of chicken, I used three boneless skinless chicken thighs and three uh, chicken drumsticks. You can use any combination though. If you like breasts better, you can also um, cook the chicken breasts with this recipe as well. To serve up my Ethiopian Doro Wat, I'm just putting it in another pot that will be a little bit easier to carry over to the dinner table. So I'm putting all the chicken in here and then scooping some of the sauce on top of it. And then the important part that comes with garnishing your Doro Wat is also hard boiled eggs. So I made some hard boiled eggs before I started making this recipe. 
So I've cracked and peeled my eggs and now I'm going to slice them up into maybe like five or six slices for each egg so that I can lay them in decoration across the top of the Dorawa. And this is also, if you're a little bit more sensitive to spice like I am, it's really good having the hard boiled eggs on top because you can put it in your mouth at the same bite as the chicken and the sauce and it definitely quells the spiciness just a little bit. Now keep in mind that most Ethiopian food and especially the Storawa is usually eaten with injera which is a uh, kind of a crepe-like flatbread type thing um, that's used to pick up a lot of the meats and sauces in Ethiopian cuisine. It is delicious, but incredibly difficult to make. I failed many times when trying to make it in my own kitchen. So if anyone has tips or tricks for how to make injera, feel free to message me or leave a comment. I'd love to hear them. Thank you so much for watching this video and for hanging out with me every week. I love cooking with you guys. If you wanna make this recipe at home when you need the full instructions, then you can find the link to those in the description of this video. And don't forget to check out all of the other recipes that we have on my YouTube channel. There are recipes from all around the world and some of them are even made in the Instant Pot. So if you liked that experience, there are other options for you to try too. Thank you so much for watching this video again. Don't forget to put some culture in your kitchen this week and I will see you next week. Bye. And today we are journeying. <laughs>